What's your take right now on maybe how the downside risks might be minimized here as we have seen stimulus measures working so far? Yeah, well, kudos to Credit Suisse for waiting for the market to go up 40%. So they started upgrading their, uh, you know, their price targets. And that's the problem with analysts. They make fortune tellers look good, Zach. Um, but no, I think there is what we're starting to see is the economic data is actually coming in better and better and much better than economists have expected. I mean, that jobs report was just so far uh, better than any economist was anticipating in May. Uh, that jobs report was fantastic. And then retail sales last week, like the best number ever, doubling what estimates were, just shows you that the economy is getting better, a lot better than most analysts, most strategists, most economists have been saying. And, you know, I've been on your show now the last couple of months and probably one of the few calling for a V-shaped recovery. And I just think when you have this much stimulus out there, um, you have this many consumers right now with money in their pocket, uh, there's a delayed or pent up demand to spend, man. This, this thing can keep, you know, this economy can keep moving up as we move along here. Yeah, I guess one of the pushbacks on that thesis right now, and we discussed this uh, last week too, since that jobs report has come out, we've seen weekly unemployment claims still not necessarily indicating uh, as strong a recovery as some might expect in terms of people going back to work. And the question still remains, even though there is pent up demand, we've seen that at casinos, strong surges, whether or not they can be sustained in the weeks to come. If you still have Americans who are worried about going out and spending their money, especially on travel, what could happen there? So while we have seen kind of a short term rebound here as things start to reopen, what are the fears for that maybe to dial back a bit as you get maybe a month past reopening, two months past or worst case scenario, if you see an uptick in cases continuing like we're seeing now, what could happen if things uh, eventually if you have no choice but to see governors maybe enact uh, shutdowns yet again? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be hard to get Americans back in, period. Just uh, that's just my guess. But I think, you know, the bottom line is I don't think you're going to see just a full shutdown again. Right. That was a very dramatic thing that you saw globally. Um, so I'm hard pressed to see that we're going to see that kind of dramatic uh, move by governments around the world. I mean, that was a pretty extreme case of like literally seeing the whole global economy turn off at one time. So I think you are going to have fits and starts. And I don't think that's ever been a surprise. I've been hearing about the second wave now since March, right? That's not new news. So I think you have to remember the market is forward looking and it's already pricing in a lot of that bad news. So my thoughts are what you have to be really concerned about here. And I said this last time is really the surprises in the positive. You know, what blows my mind right now, Zach, is you have $4.6 trillion sitting in cash. Investors have taken like $2 trillion out of the market sitting in cash right now. And meanwhile, economic news gets better and better and better. So, you know, I think all the fear is kind of priced in. People are afraid of that second wave. So you may get some of that. But again, if it's not as bad as people think, and I don't think it's going to be as bad as people think, then really surprises are going to be in the positive, not the negative. Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting to hear you talk about that because there's almost two camps here when we think about what could happen in the back half of 2020. There's the camp that says even if there is a, that rebound, maybe you should put your money more in defensive stocks, or if there's not, there's a lot of ability to be playing some of those exposed sectors like the airlines or, or cruise liners. So what is your thinking? Because we had JP Morgan putting out a note uh, last week to wrap things up, really pushing the idea of technology, communications, and healthcare, the so-called end game winners here that we'll see, uh, I guess, boosts whether or not we get a second wave. And you think about Zoom and all these companies benefiting from the shift to work from home, whether or not it's still uh, exactly what we're seeing now. They could at least maintain a lot of that boost moving forward. So what's your thinking around the safest way to be navigating all this? Yeah, I think the nice thing is since the bottom, you've seen a lot of great market breadth. Um, and you look at all the beaten down sectors, like I've, I've been espousing energy for a long time here and energy stocks have had the best run off the bottom. So I think it really pays to diversify your money here because there's such a disparity between healthcare stocks and growth stocks where Let's face it, man, there's been a lot of good news baked into those stocks. I mean, valuations on those stocks are very, very frothy here. And they didn't get hit that hard by the pandemic, right? I mean, if you're Amazon, you're probably taking more orders than ever. And you're starting to see that multiple expansion just go up and up and up. It's not really because they're really growing their earnings out significantly. Meanwhile, and I just love cyclicals, I've talked about it a lot, is you really have to think about your portfolio in the stocks that are going to benefit from the economy reopening. I mean, airlines are the perfect example, right? As things start to mobilize, we feel more comfortable, we're going to travel more. Um, all those beaten down stocks like airline stocks are going to benefit from that big time. And they've already had the biggest price discount when they sold off. So, yeah, I think you definitely want to diversify here and internationally as well. If you look at the multiples on emerging market stocks right now, even developed Europe right now, 
it's just so attractive versus what you're seeing in big cap US. So with my clients and our portfolios, we're absolutely diversifying across the board. Um, I love to say it every time I think I'm on your show, but the S&P is just a tech fund and drag now. So don't just yeah. put your money there. You're just buying tech.